Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of understanding instrument approach plates. With every FA instrument approach plate or chart, there are six major sections, and it's critical for an instrument student or an instrument pilot that's just rusty to really go back and understand what the basic uh, six sections are in, in an instrument approach plate and the information provided in each one of those. So today I'm going to go over all of that information and hopefully you have a better understanding of how to properly um, interpret and read and brief an instrument approach plate. But before I do, uh, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. Okay, let's get into it. Major sections of an instrument approach plate. There are again six sections associated with an instrument approach plate. We first have the marginal data, which is near the top and on the sides, as well as on the bottom. Um, we'll go into more details on the specifics of that in a minute. We have the pilot briefing area, which is again near the top. We have the plan view, which is in the middle of the approach plate. We have the profile view, which sits below the plan view. Uh, we have below the profile view, the landing minimum associated with the type of approaches and category of aircraft. And then lastly, we have the airport diagram section. So now we're going to go deep onto each one of these six sections and talk about some of the specifics that's in it. So underneath the marginal data section, the information that they, that section includes is the approach name, which you can see up here, ILS or localized runway eight in Laconia, the airport name, uh, it's um, Laconi Airport, the FAA computer ID for the approach, which would be up here, um, the city and state of the approach, Laconia, New Hampshire, and the current amendment date and number. And there's also the status here of when it was last um, released and whether it's current or not. And then the final piece of information is the lat longitude information that you see down here for the airport. In the pilot briefing section, we have um, this top section up here, which gives us the approach frequency and course. In this case, it's an ILS, so they've given us a, a localizer frequency. Uh, the runway length and airport elevation and touchdown zone um, fee. In the second section, they'll give us information such as any alternate takeoff minimums alternate um, requirements that are non-standard, that's what the T and the A are for in the triangles, um, any notes to pilots, like maybe the run, uh, the particular approach can't be used at night or circling to land is not available at night, things like that. Uh, the approach lighting system, now's are here in this example, and then missed approach information listed in a textual format. And then the last section in re requires all the appropriate frequencies to fly this approach. Uh, such as the AWOS or ATIS information, the approach frequency, uh, clearance delivery, which you normally don't need while you're in flight. This is where you norm this is the frequency you use to pick up a clearance or close the clearance, for example, uh, after you land. Um, and then lastly, the UNICOM or CTAF frequency or tower frequency if you're at a towered airport. In the plan view section, um, this is the, the main body, um, and it is basically um, a top-down look at the approach and course and includes not only the course information, inbound course, but also um, includes information such as procedural turns, navigation aids, um, fixes, initial approach fixes, final approach fixes, all that's kind of visible here. Uh, minimum safe altitude, in case you um, lose some of your, your um, navigation equipment or you get confused or lost, it gives you your minimum safe altitude that you can climb to relative to a fix. Uh, and then obstacle data, you'll see numbers around here, these associated with um, obstacles in their particular elevations. In the profile view section, we get this uh, kind of side view look at the approach, and it includes information such as altitudes, minimum altitudes, for example here, minimum altitude 4,200 feet as you're crossing Nilu. Uh, descent information, such as kind of glide slope information or step down altitudes that you can do, depending if you're flying um, a localized approach or something, um, something like that. Fix information along the way, how far you are to the localizer. Um, 
and the altitudes that may be associated with those fixes, uh, or, and step down altitudes, as I just mentioned. Uh, missed approach points is your visual descent point. If you uh, don't see the runway environment um, at your decision altitude or your MDA and you get to this point here, you're going to um, go missed at this point. Um, it can be other places, but, but again, the profile view shows you where, you, where you're going to start your missed approach. Um, and then we have missed approach icons up here that kind of give us an uh, iconic kind of view of uh, what we want to do if we need to fly the missed approach. And lastly, distance you must remain while within doing a procedure turn. Uh, this one doesn't have a procedure turn, but in some cases you may have to fly a procedure turn outbound. And often I see um, stay within 10 nautical miles of the particular fix or the final approach fix. And then lastly, they'll give you the glide slope angle information. Here it's 3% um, for this approach in. In the landing minimum section, um, this kind of bottom box down here, um, it's broken up by air, um, aircraft category, category A, B, C, and D. Um, based on the types of trainer aircraft we fly, typically like a Piper Archer Warrior or a Skyhawk or something like that, we're normally in this category A um, space. It's basically your VREF speed uh, that we're looking at here to use and for uh, aircraft in category A we're like below 91 knots uh, we'll be using the category A. Um, if we're flying an ILS approach uh, we have some altitude uh, minimum um, decision altitudes here, decision altitudes, we might have an MDA um, and we're also getting um, visibility information. Uh, so it's going to tell us in this landing minimum section, the type of approach, the airport category, um, if it's an ILS or localizer, um, if it could be, if it's an RNAV approach, it'd give you LPV, LNAV, LNAV, uh, VNAV type um, categories for the type of approach, and it may give you a circling information like you see here. Um, and then lastly, um, it'll give you straight in versus again, those circling minimums, as I just mentioned. The last section is airport diagram section. Um, that's over here in the far right. This diagram section includes things like the airport elevation, the touchstone zone elevation over here, um, the types of runway lighting that's available, you can see right down here, uh, miniature diagram of the airport and the terminal, so you know where maybe you're going to taxi to get to uh, FBO or something to that effect. And also, lastly, down here, from the final approach, final approach fix to the missed approach point, they'll give you um, information in regards to times based on, again, your, um, your VREF speed or your approach speed uh, that you're flying, how many minutes it'll take from the final approach fix uh, to the missed approach point. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of the major section in an instrument approach plate and the information that's contained in each one of those sections. Uh, this will immensely help you when you go to actually brief an approach plate. Um, and in my next video, I'll actually come out with uh, some tutorial on how to chronologically go through the process of briefing an approach plate. So stay tuned for that video. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you get notified on my next video.